All right, so whenever you're working on the back of a stove, always unplug it. You don't want to be touching any of this um, with the power active. All Englander controllers from the factory are going to have a piece of metal tape on here. And inside this metal tape, there is a fuse to replace the main fuse of the board. And there is also a little black jumper. You see these two blue wires right here? See right here, right next to it, there is a little pin and it says VAC Bypass um, J11. Right there, see how I just put it on there? Right there. If you put it on those pins, it jumps these two blue wires together. If you're getting an E1, E2 error coding, and what happens, and Englander is not very good at telling people this, but the end of this hose becomes dry and brittle, and then it gets a crack in it. And when it gets a crack, it's not forming a tight seal. It's causing this switch to roll out, and the connection is lost to the board. So, uh, depending on what model you have this vacuum switch right here the PUVS this is a 0.17 inch water column switch this is always mounted to the back of the combustion motor but I've seen it commonly mounted down here we've seen it commonly mounted over up underneath here underneath the hopper so and this stove has two of these switches this one is a 0.17 inch um, but way over in here underneath the hopper there's another one see these wires there's another switch over here and this is a 0.15 uh, and that's actually for the firebox and that will not send an error code at all um, this is the only one that ever sends an error code it's usually this hose right here um, but I can show you how to check that We have it set for our ohms. When we have a circuit, we're gonna get a sound off. Here is our vacuum switch right here. And you'll see that there are three pins on it. One, two, three. Now, the one that's lower, the first one, this is the common. So a wire is always going to go on there. The switch has two sides. It's got a gray side and it's got a black side. Normally closed. And the other one is normally open. On this stove, it's always going to be looking for negative pressure. The wires are always going to be set for normally open. It's looking for an event. The combustion motor turning on creates an event, which creates airflow. And that airflow creates suction, which closes the switch. When we lose suction, we lose the contact. And that's the error code that you're getting on the board. When it goes back to normally open, the stove shuts off. That's the E1 error code that you're getting. So to test this switch, to make sure that this is working, all right, we got to create some suction. So we got one on the common right down there. And if we put it on this one, which is normally open, we get nothing. If we go to this one, it works because that's normally closed. All right, meaning that the circuit is always connected between those two until you have an event the event would cause it to open, all right? But right now, on normally open, we got nothing. If you suck on it, see? So that's how that all works. If you have a stove that's got ash in the hose, use a syringe. If your stove has been used, <laughs> don't suck on this hose. If you put this on there and you want to put a zip tie or something around it and then you pull the plunger up you can create enough suction to close this thing e1 error codes always has to do with this to test this thing in the stove we would take our wires off and then test right away working however because i don't have the wires hooked up right here we would get an error code but we're not going to because i put that jumper on see i put the jumper on when i was showing you that and so now we're just going to run 
and there's gonna be no error code. I don't recommend doing this um, to run the stove. Don't run the stove by defeating that switch, all right? That switch is meant to shut the power off, to create a, a safety feature so that the, you don't burn your house down. You can put that on there as a way of troubleshooting it, or if you're waiting for one of these parts to come in and you're gonna be with the stove, don't leave the stove unattended with that jumper on there. This is a safety thing, and you can cause a really big problem. So the other thing is with the switch, is that this is positive, black is positive, and gray is negative. And it can be wired, normally open, normally closed. So there's like six different ways that you can do the switch, but gray is always used on the stove, low pressure, and then one and three are being used for the wire. And there's nothing on the second one. When I have this switch in someone's stove, I carry around a bunch of tools. Um, and I also carry around these, you know, wire disconnects. All right, and this is just an empty one. So, see how I put an empty spade on there? That protects anyone from touching that accidentally. It also serves as a good reminder that if you're playing with this and you're not used to doing this every day, that no wire is supposed to go on that middle one. 